This is just from. nuts. Eight hundred and fifty million dollars in state funding. Actually, I think the Pagulas. I think it's six fifty in state funding, and then two hundred from the county is my understanding, which probably ultimately comes from uh, the state. Um, Eight hundred and fifty million dollars in public money for uh, the new Bill Stadium, stadium, stadium. Uh, for the Bills in Buffalo. Yeah, this is just insane yeah well they're they're threatening to move uh the bills to austin that's the that's the big uh underlying current there because the pagulas are some of the shadiest owners uh in the league and they're also they also own the buffalo sabers and they uh you know that's a whole different situation they basically held their star player hostage who wanted to get a uh some neck surgery and they said you know you can't get the surgery unless we approve of it which is like a whole different situation. The NHL allows for, I mean, the, the players union uh, did not secure the fact that their players should be able to get whatever surgery they want in their negotiations, which is a whole nother situation. But yeah, they're, uh, they're pretty gross. They're trying to, sh- and, and they released a public statement about this on their, uh, on their social media about how we really want to continue to build, you know, this stadium, but we need this kind of funding. Essentially it's a public shakedown of, of the state and the city of Buffalo. Well, and not only that, I mean, growing up in Buffalo, this is like a quarter of the half of the culture of Buffalo. Like, it is a huge this is there. huge thing. You know, everybody goes, Bills games are everything in the, I mean, literally, it's like, say, I grew up when the Sabres and the Bills, you know, both made, uh, NHL went to the, the finals and the Bills went to four years of Super Bowl. That's about as much sports you're going to get from me, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to leave it there. But yeah. I used to go to games, like, we used to go to Orchard Park. It was a thing. It was the, I mean, it still is the center of culture in Buffalo. So, you know, I think it's also very predatory and Kathy Hochul's from Buffalo. Um, She, I believe used to represent Orchard Park, the district where uh, the the stadium is, I might be wrong on that, but at least close by, it doesn't matter. So, you know, there's, they're preying on the fact that Buffalo needs the money. I mean, this is the city of Buffalo and Erie County went into delinquency. I mean, they they went bankrupt uh, in the late 2000s. My mom was a legislator there. And, you know, ever since they've had a little bit of a they've definitely had a renaissance. And so I think like what they're trying to do is is they're preying on the fact that Buffalonians need the Buffalo Bills to keep this renaissance going. The stadium's in fine condition. There's no reason why like this. We, they need a new stadium. But um, you also might want to remember that that Governor Cuomo, uh, one of his his many, many corruption scandals, but the one that sent his his best ally and others, uh, Joe Prococo who um, during the live show, I wish that Gustavo Senator Rivera did his impression of Joe Prococo because Joe Prococo used to call people on the phone and threaten them yeah. uh, and including Governor or, uh, Senator Rivera. So Joe Prococo went to jail because of this Buffalo billion scheme. There was this whole scheme about how they're going to send a billion dollars to Buffalo. Well, turns out it just went to a bunch of cronies and those cronies, some of whom are in jail now, Joe Prococo uh, as well. And, and that was one of Governor Cuomo's first big, Corruption scandals. Yeah. You know? I, I just want to like add another more meta point about um, some of these sports oligarchs in general, because to know to, to Nomi's point, too, about how Buffalo cherishes these teams and it's part of the fabric of the city like European football, they don't understand the concept like soccer fans right they don't understand the concept of uh, a billionaire can just up and move out of a city and like take the team with them i mean they just did this in oakland with the raiders i know the raiders have moved a few times but they just did this in st louis with uh, the rams mm-hmm. who moved to los angeles and they actually the nfl had to settle some money with the city of st louis because they basically you know lied and then and just up and left st louis with their team these are major sources of revenue for the the respective cities, especially a city like Buffalo or St. Louis, you know, um, where like, I, you know, the, where, where there is less money generated um, and they rely on them. And the owners, the like capitalists that own these teams, the oligarchs, they make a decision they they use that desperation as leverage. Um, and that's why these teams need to be publicly owned <laughs> um, and remain as fabrics of the city as opposed to like, I don't know. Again, the Chargers are another example in the NFL where they were a big part of San Diego. They go to Los Angeles. Nobody goes to their games, but they, uh, the owner of the Chargers got a better tax deal there. So that's how you do it. And, and like the fact that these guys are, despite them being basically f- 
part of the city, part of the culture. Right. So it's not just a regular, you know, Amazon headquarters. Right. This it's not just part, tax breaks. R- right. This is a part of the way that, you know, the, 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 the I, I keep repeating myself. This is a fabric of the city. The fact that these oligarchs can up and go um, based on better deals for their stadiums whenever they please. It's a very American way that we approach sports, but it's, 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 it's bad. I mean, that's why. Yeah, there there, it, there should be more Green Bay Packers of the world where they're they're up yeah. there. It's, well, it's can't owned we also, by the, the fans. Can't there also be some type of federal legislation that um, I mean doesn't uh, I am does does the NFL get some type of like uh, monopoly waiver or something to that effect? Mm. I mean, d- don't they? I mean, can't there be some strings tied to that monopoly waiver? They get a monopoly waiver because um, it may not be a monopoly waiver. It might be a different kind. But because each of the 32 teams are technically their own business. Uh, Yeah. So, uh, I mean, let's, uh, you know, which is just garbage. That's uh, absurd. Of course, you you can't have one football team. It's it's, it's ridiculous. They're all part of a, a league that's just to pretend. I protect. believe that's also how the MLB gets around some of like their labor regulations. Well, you get rid of that waiver, and at the very least, you simply ass, say like, "Can't move the name." Yeah, right. I mean, can't, can't move you, the team, or, or you can't move the team, but you can't maybe move the name. Like, I mean, what, <laughs> like, uh, I guess you can't get the NFL to expand their, um, uh, their, but you can't move the team. I mean, this is just absurd. Yeah. Well, think about just, I mean, this is a million dollars. It's a one point two billion, four billion dollar project. There's probably tax breaks associated with it. Think about the jobs. I mean, I I, I understand the culture and and I know what Buffalo is and and a lot of jobs, not just at the stadium and with the bills and with the press companies that are associated with it. But this is a big factor that people aren't aware of. You know, how the services that are provided all stadiums, concerts uh, across the country, there's a company called Delaware North that provides like the food. And like if you go, you'll see Delaware North brands. Well, Delaware North represents Delaware Avenue and North Street Avenue. I don't know, it's a side street. And that's where the headquarters of Delaware North is. The family, the Jacob family is is i think if not the wealthiest but one of the wealthiest families out of buffalo i have no doubt that they had some sort of aspect in negotiating this not that you know they're it's it's relying on on the buffalo bills being in buffalo but they've maintained their presence there um one of the family members is now congressman uh, chris jacobs who took kathy hochel's seat i mean this is very oligarch like deal making here. I mean, that's what this is about. And this is, I think, the un- we pull back the curtain and all these deals. It really does come down to a few oligarchs, you know, uh, hustling for not just tax breaks, but these deals that affect hundreds of, I mean, thousands of jobs. I don't, I don't know at the end of the day how yeah. many industries rely on on the bills being there and all the, you know, the bars around there, around you know, in Orchard Park. I mean, it's it's offensive. It's offensive. Horrible. Sam, as a follow-up to my I am yesterday about the new stadium funding in Buffalo, do you remember the Jets' West Side Stadium proposal next to the Javits Center in 2005? I do. I was living in North Jersey back then, so I heard a lot about it on WNYC. If my memory serves me right, the stadium was part of the New York's bid for the 2012 Summer Olympics. I think it fell apart after MSG lobbied against it because they think the new stadium will take away from their own event hosting business. The one funny result of that deal dying was the NFL draft, which for a long time was held at the theater at uh, Madison Square Garden, and became a traveling show. Different cities as an FU to MSN, uh, MSG by the NFL. I didn't realize that, but yeah. I do remember, but I think there was also a lot of pushback. Uh, you know, there was growing anti Giuliani sentiment at that time, and I think that was a function of it too. A football stadium down there seems like a nightmare. It's just, it would have been insane. Oh by God. the Javits Center? Is that what they said? Yeah, yeah. yeah been, it would have been insane. Lunacy. I mean, and then they got the a tax break to do it in Jersey and East Rutherford. The place is a freaking dump. But I mean, the idea that the they MetLife was built recently and is this bad is hilarious. And they should have doubled the capital because two teams play there. But regardless, update on the story of New York State and I guess the uh, Erie County, although it's coming from the state at the end of the day. Let's be honest. Uh, pouring $850 million into the new stadium in Buffalo. For the Bills. For the Bills. Um, you remember yesterday, Nomi had mentioned that the there's a food service that is a national service. I can't remember the name off the top of my head now. 
maybe you can just remind me of that, yeah. that provides uh, food for... Um, I got it. Provides food for all of the, uh, the, the stadiums. And, you know, they love when a new stadium gets built because it means that they can update their facilities, they can sell more, they can, you know, the, the, the way you sell, make, the way you, you make money at these things is you, you, maybe you, you increase your prices a little bit. But the food service is called, it's a concessionaire, Delaware North. Delaware and North, the right. senior vice president of well, said. Hold on one second. Okay, so, sorry. Delaware North. And so what they do is when they get a new stadium is they increase their efficiency and they know where, you know, the flow of people are going to be and they're going to sell more hot dogs and, you know, crap cakes or whatever the hell they're selling and they're going to make more money. And it turns out um, Governor Hochul, who had to sign off on this, obviously, um, she forgot one little detail that seems a little awkward now. The, remind us, Emma, what was it that the Governor Hochul forgot? Uh, her husband is a senior vice president and general counsel for Delaware North, the major food concessionaire at the Buffalo Bills, his current Highmark Stadium. So uh, they currently provide the food at the current stadium. I mean, Nomi said it doesn't need updating. It, it's, it, it, it might. It does. I just uh, I'm, I disagree with the concept of it uh, being paid for by the taxpayer when you have an owner that's worth billions of dollars. But he was essentially saying, I'm going to. You're not. Yeah. You're not. It seems a little bit sexist to assume that just because uh, (laughs) Governor Hochul has a husband whose every bit of his material interest is tied up in the success of this company that is going to benefit mightily from this uh, uh, this huge tax investment in essentially allowing his company to make significantly more profits. You're not suggesting there's some type of relationship between that, are you? That would be very uh, self-hating of me as a woman. Yes. Self-hating feminism. Come you got to support Hochul. She's, yeah. a, uh, She's a woman. Yeah. She slays. Um, but just to reiterate the point from, from yesterday, this is why we need more community-owned professional sports franchises because the pagulas are threatening the state of new york and you know they have leverage here because uh hokel and her husband want to financially benefit from it but they have leverage because they were saying we're just going to go to austin right we'll be the third uh nfl team in, in texas and this is always how it works and minnesota sports teams are familiar with this uh often happening yeah. um, st louis is uh unfortunately familiar with it as well literally happened our buddy uh the starbucks boy with the uh, seattle supersonics basketball team they eventually shipped them to oklahoma yep. city when they had kevin durant as yep. a rookie yep exactly um yeah the sonics uh went kaput and um it's uh, but, but we've seen in the nfl uh, multiple times in the past 10 years the san diego chargers moving to los angeles the st louis rams moving to los angeles as well um the oakland raiders a staple of that community and of that city uh, las vegas is more that's crazy las vegas has way more money because of gambling and because of tourism so here you go um so like uh, that again uh, the i have my issues with how uh, the packers are run as an organization bradley and i were talking about that before the show today but they are community owned and it should be um because these teams are really a fabric of the community and provide so much employment for people in those areas more community owned franchises um and the the tax giveaway to keep billionaires happy and basically giving into a hostage situation plus the side uh, hustle for the governor herself it's that's it's sick 